I want to switch topics. Anything else on rough Ukraine? Uh, go ahead. Uh, the Palestinian uh, territories that, yeah, you know, for the past few days have witnessed uh, an increased assault by the Israeli occupation army into towns and villages, killing a number of, uh, uh, of people, killing six people last night uh, alone. The biggest city in the West Bank is under siege, uh, Naples. Uh, and that coincides with the visit of the Israeli president. Are you raising these issues with them at the present time? Said, we, when we meet with our Israeli counterparts, we do routinely uh, discuss with them uh, the conflict, uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, we've said publicly from here uh, that we're concerned by the sharp uptick in violence. We've had an opportunity in recent days, and I assume uh, today with uh, President Herzog and tomorrow with President Herzog uh, will be another opportunity uh, to reinforce uh, the need for de-escalation for the two sides, for uh, Palestinian authorities and for Israelis uh, to take steps to de-escalate uh, the situation. The fact is that um, we recognize Israel's very real security threats. Uh, we're also very concerned by the increased violence in the West Bank, where uh, this past month alone, two Israelis and 33 Palestinians have been killed. And we re-emphasize the need, as I just said, for all parties to take steps to do everything in their power uh, to de-escalate the situation. Uh, the recent period has seen a, a sharp and alarming increase in Israeli and Palestinian deaths, uh, including uh, those of, of numerous children. We continue to emphasize that uh, Israelis and Palestinians both deserve equal measures of security, of stability, of justice, of freedom, of dignity, uh, and of democracy. And it's vital uh, that both parties, Israelis and Palestinians, uh, take urgent action uh, to prevent an even greater loss of life. That sounds wonderful, but let me ask you straight out. I mean, you also you recognize Israel's security needs and so on. You also recognize that the Palestinians are occupied. Let me ask you straight out. Do the Palestinians have a right to resist the military occupation? Uh, Saeed, we want to see a two-state, a negotiated two-state solution. Do they uh, have the right to resist the military occupation that is killing them daily, assaulting their villages, stealing their crops, destroying their cars, their homes, every day after day? Do they have the right to resist that occupation? Or maybe the Palestinians are the children of a list of God. Saeed, the loss of every innocent life is a tragedy. It is something that we feel deeply. It is precisely why we have been so engaged from the earliest days of this administration in the first instance to reestablish relations with the Palestinian Authority, but uh, with the Palestinian people. And as part of that, uh, to provide humanitarian, urgent, urgently needed humanitarian support to the Palestinian people. We've provided uh, upwards of $1 billion uh, in support to the Palestinian people uh, in the West Bank, uh, in Gaza, that support uh, will continue. Ultimately, to your question, we want to see a negotiated two-state solution uh, to this conflict. There is no military uh, solution to this conflict. There is no solution uh, to this conflict uh, through violence. Ultimately, it has to come through diplomacy. Yeah, well, Palestinians are the recipient of that violence most of the time. Uh, let me ask you, earlier this year, a uh, Palestinian-American uh, died in, in Israeli custody, and uh, the Israelis claimed that they settled with his family. His family said, no, we have not. They still demand investigation. Are you following up on this issue? We're aware of it. Uh, we are aware of reports of a, proposed, uh, a proposal to compensate the family of U.S. citizen Omar Assad, uh, who tragically uh, died earlier this year. We'd refer you to the government of Israel and to the Assad family uh, with regard to the details of that settlement. But as we previously stated, uh, we were and are extremely concerned uh, regarding the circumstances uh, surrounding Mr. Assad's death. And importantly, we urge the swift conclusion into the ongoing criminal investigation uh, into his death. We note the public statement on the report of the uh, IDF commander's inquiry into the case and its findings, including the determination that, quote, the incident showed a clear lapse of moral judgment and a failure to failure to, quote, protect the sanctity of any human life. Uh, we are also aware of the dis that disciplinary uh, action is being taken against three commanders of the unit involved in the incident. Uh, we're continuing to follow this very closely.
Afghanistan. Okay. I, on Israel, uh, sure. do you have any read out on the secretary's meeting with the Israeli president? It has uh, just concluded, or, or even soon will conclude, uh, just as I uh, promised yesterday with another readout, I promise you we'll have a, a readout of this meeting, uh, and I suspect we will. I suspect we will have it today. Well, uh, there's an Israeli election coming up soon, and I feel like it's not a presidential one, but I, uh, but, but, but still, I, uh, it would be nice to get it before December, no, un, un, November first. Un, understood. Uh, we will have a uh, we will have a written readout for you uh, at some point today. Is it true that the Israelis shared some information about the use of Iranian bombs in the uh, I wouldn't speak to anything that uh, had been shared in, uh, in intelligence. And one more on Israel. Any, uh, any date or time for the signing in ceremony uh, of the agreement between Israel and Lebanon? Uh, Amos Hoxine continues to be in regular touch with the parties. As you know, there are national processes uh, that uh, both sides have to undertake in order for them to submit to the United States as a facilitator of uh, this deal uh, in order for us to take that next step. Uh, those processes are continuing. Uh, we are optimistic that uh, we'll be in a position to uh, share additional information on this before long. Uh, Nazira.